Hey, welcome investors to the 40 Finance channel. My name's Jeff Beers. Today we're gonna look at my individual stock portfolio in my retail account. Uh, and by retail account, I just mean that this is not held in a retirement account or some other tax advantaged uh, type account. These are stocks that I buy uh, directly on Ally with after-tax money and the gains that come out of them those get taxed too, depending on when they're withdrawn. So when I talk about stocks I own, stocks I buy, uh, holding for taxes, all that stuff, it, it mostly has to do with this account. I also have a retirement account that I manage that's almost, uh, in fact, it is entirely ETFs. That one kind of moseys along. I've done a video about it in the past. I'll do like twice annual updates on that one, but it's not very sexy because it's just ETFs and they sort of grow along. Uh, and that one's built for more like a 30 year outlook. Whereas my stock account that we're going to look out today, you know, that's managed very actively. And while the goal is to hold every stock for at least a year, if not three to five years, uh, depending on what I buy and what the prices are available on the market, you know, I usually have uh, several changes every month with this one. All right, before we jump in, reminder that my stock picks and projections are just my opinion for your entertainment. Please make sure you do your own research before jumping in any stock. And if you like stock market analysis like this and other personal finance videos, please subscribe to the 40 Finance channel. Give this video a like. It helps quite a bit. Thank you to everybody who has supported the channel so far. All right, kicking things off, this is a screenshot of the actual account. We'll dig into the holdings over at Yahoo where I've replicated everything down to the individual lots and uh, cost basis. It's just a lot easier to see everything on the screen over at Yahoo. And frankly, I don't wanna do live video of my actual stock market account. But in Ally, I also have a savings account that I transfer money to. And I also have another stock account that I manage for my mom. And in case you're wondering, I have enjoyed uh, this platform that Ally has. I think it's great for long-term investors. I think that if you're a day trader uh, or you're making molecular changes, you know, three times a day, there's probably better uh, outlets out there for you. But if you wanna get a competitive savings account and have it tied directly uh, to your stock market account and make those transitions super easy, as well as some of the other features that only banks have like uh, Zeal and some of the other services, then Ally has worked out really well for me. All right, so again, I replicated everything over here at Yahoo. You can see I'm kind of excited. I was gonna wait till I hit 100,000 um, to actually do this video, but we're getting close enough. And frankly, I'll almost assuredly go over 100,000 just with deposits in, in February. Um, you know, on the flip side, if I, if I decided to wait to get to 100,000, I'd probably get to all nines and then the market would crash and, and I wouldn't do the video for like two more months. So I decided to jump in with it. All right, just one call out here is all this uh, statistical risk profile, valuation, annual performance. I just went in and added all my stocks uh, and updated cost basis. And as a matter of fact, I took an existing list and deleted the stuff I don't have anymore and blah, blah, blah. So I don't know how accurate this annual performance stuff is, but I can tell you as we scroll down to the actual holdings, um, this is a live look here on Friday while the market is open. And all of these items like average cost per share, market value, and total gain, these are all live looks. You also have my share count, all that stuff is updated. I basically for each one went in and whatever day, first or last day that I bought into these, I just added how many total shares I have. But see, I didn't buy SDC 300 at one time. That was over time, and I just updated this little box to equal the cost basis that's showing in my Ally account. So I just wanted to clarify that in case you were curious. But if we go by market value of what are my top holdings in terms of market value, PayPal and DraftKings through pure price appreciation have recently overtaken Visa. So we know Visa's had 
uh, sort of a flat line effect over the past 30 to 45 days. And that's allowed DraftKings and PayPal from a value standpoint uh, actually come up and become the top position. So PayPal, I'm almost at 15,000, just on 55 shares. And you can see the average price I paid, 187.39. And that's been a gain of 43% for me. So very nice PayPal, especially considering how large of a stock it is. You normally don't get 43% returns on a large cap stock. Uh, so I've been happy with that. DraftKings, if you guys know, I just did a video on DraftKings. I bought this uh, shortly after the IPO, 200 shares at 34.56. And DraftKings has been on a big run this week. So I'm actually plus 85% uh, on that one. You got the Super Bowl coming up this week. You had ARK Invest, bought some DraftKings. And uh, that's always funny because you get 10,000 YouTube videos on what Kathy Wood's buying. Uh, so I'm sure that helped to boost this one. And of course, it's good news for me, but I have no plans to sell out on DraftKings anytime soon. Uh, Visa is one of the longer term holds that I've had for a few years now. Uh, shares, I've got 60 shares of Visa at 189.93. So it's kind of interesting when you look at PayPal, I paid almost exactly the same amount. But from a gains perspective, Visa has only produced plus 10% gains. Now that does not include uh, dividends but you see, I'm at 60 shares, so it's not like it's uh, you know a million dollars worth of dividends here. Next, we have Etsy, which is a purchase that I made later last year. 36 shares at 133.24. That's another one that has blown up at a ridiculous level, plus 73%. Uh, since I bought in, and that's not even a year. But I honestly do think Etsy has more room to run over the next three to five years, and I'm excited to be a part of that. Next up, we have TJX, which probably not everyone knows because it's not a high-flying tech stock. It's actually a retail store uh, here in America, and they have international stores too for TJ Maxx, Marshalls, Home Goods. I've been in this one for a long time. 105 shares. And the value today is $71.96. This is up plus 42%, but that gain has been over time. I would say it's been about three years or so since I bought my first share of TJX. Uh, but 42% is good, and this one typically pays a dividend too. They suspended it due to uh, having to close the stores during the pandemic, uh, but that is coming back. I believe in March, if I remember correctly. Next up, we've got Enphase. Uh, it's another recent purchase, 33 shares. I got in for a cost basis of 195. Unfortunately for me, I started on a high end. You know, against every logical bone in my body, I bought this at like 215 or something like that. And it's, it's come down and, and honestly, it doesn't surprise me. Uh, so this one, I'm taking a small loss early in the game, 0.84%. The majority of these 33 shares were purchased in January. Uh, so we're just getting started this one. I'm not really worried about the future because this is definitely a five-year uh, stock if they pan out the way I hope they do. All right, scrolling up a little bit here, we got Rocket and 290 shares. I went deep on Rocket at 1984. Still waiting for this one to pan out, uh, plus 8.62%. I talk about Rocket a lot on the live streams. People always ask me, hey, I'm hanging strong, man. I haven't been in this uh, even for a year. It says, if this date is correct, this should be the, it's either the first or last day I bought Rocket. Um, of August of 2020. And yeah, I'm not even thinking about Rocket until August of 2021. I do still believe in the company. And you know, the longer that you hold, the better your odds are that the stock will go up. Next up is TSM. That one, I have 40 shares at 78.52. Really kicking myself that I didn't go for the full 100 shares on TSM. 
uh, but it's been nice, plus 62%, the value of over $5,000. I would love to add more to TSM. I just wish that uh, this 127 price that we're at today is so much higher than TSM has ever traded before. And it's really hard for me to buy in at that point. But if we do have a market correction, you can expect that I will add to my TSM positions, ideally keeping the cost basis under $100. So I have to do a little bit of math there to figure out what I'm targeting. All right, next up is TAP. This is Molson Coors, the American uh, beer maker. It's another stock that I've had for a really long time. I'm a big Coors Light fan. And uh, this is sort of a passion play, I guess. I did a video on it recently. Um, I sold, I was down on TAP. Uh, I think that my first purchase in TAP was for about $70 three years ago or so. Uh, during the pandemic, I managed my cost basis down to about 45. But what I ended up doing here recently, right before the end of the year for tax reasons, I sold all my old shares that I had purchased for between $70 and I think $55. So everything that I bought a couple years ago that was still at a loss, I sold off. It landed me right at 100 shares when all was said and done. And the new cost basis, because it was only calculating the shares I bought during the pandemic flop, is $34.58. So when you see 43% up, you know, that's true technically, but don't forget, I sold off the worst version uh, versions that I owned of that stock. So I feel good about being reset for the future. Uh, this is another dividend stock uh, that's sort of nice to have in case times get tough in the market. Next up, GBTC, I just did a video on this. This is the Bitcoin Trust. This is my play into Bitcoin, and I think it's been my best investment so far uh, as of today. So I bought 100 shares at a cost basis of 990. This cost basis is split into two parts. I bought 50 shares, um, I think 2017, something like that. Whenever the last big Bitcoin um, boom was, I bought like 50 shares at $20 or $25. Then during the pandemic this year, I bought 50 more at a much lower price in the five, six, seven dollar range and brought my cost basis down under $10. We know what Bitcoin has done this year. And, you know, you're up 300 percent, which is great. It's only twenty eight hundred dollars, though. It's not like I'm, you know, living in a golden palace because of it. Uh, but it's nice to have some Bitcoin, quite frankly, with all the news going on. I know now in my investment world that I've got PayPal and Square, and they'll play off Bitcoin's prices as well. Uh, so I feel like I have a good exposure to Bitcoin uh, without being oversaturated in case it were to dip again. All right, next up is Smile Direct Club. This is another one that was a pandemic purchase, if you will. Uh, 300 shares. $7.64. I can't believe how far this one dropped uh, during the year and was still dropped uh, in June or July. It unfortunately has uh, quite the target of short sellers, I think in the 30 percentile range, but I'm still up 62% on it. And that's at $12.40. Um, I will reevaluate this trade somewhere in the neighborhood of $16. So I wanna wait for it to at least double up. I'm projecting that happens, the $16 happens before the end of 2021. And at that time, I'll reevaluate how much I wanna hold on SDC. Uh, we'll worry about that when we get there. All right, next up is Square. And I only have a limited position in Square. Bought this at the same time as Enphase where I was trying to change my mindset about some of the uh, gross stocks that are out in the market. Got in at a cost basis of 214. Stupid thing is already up to 239. I should have bought more, but I wanted to buy things like Enphase and other stocks I had prioritized. So stuck with 15 shares. Uh, it has gone up 11%. I would like to see this position 
uh, go up into the $7,500 range, uh, somewhere in there. And then I would likely be done with Square, at least buying it for a really long time. And I would just hang on to it for the long haul. All right, next up is Amazon. Just one share of Amazon. Um, I really kicked around with buying two or three. I came close a couple times. I missed uh, a day that I thought it was going to go under 3000 It stayed just over 3000 so I missed out on it because uh, I didn't pull the trigger. I was waiting for nickels and dimes when uh, it would have been just a lot better to buy in. We'll see what happens with Amazon. I'd like to get you know two or three shares total and then just be done with it. I think Amazon has some great growth prospects for five years. There's some other ones on this list though that will likely grow faster than them. So I just have to choose my battles. All right, next up is BFT. This is a SPAC that is not uh, transitioned over. This is the PaySafe SPAC. Ultimately, it's going to be PaySafe, who is a digital payment platform uh, that runs all the payments for DraftKings and a ton of other uh, gaming and e-gaming companies. Right now, I sit at $15 for this one, and this is easy two, three year hold. You can see I'm up 17%, uh, but the news for this hasn't even started yet. It's not even pay safe yet. So this one will just kind of hide out until, until more news develops. All right, next up is Sabre. I've talked about this one several times. This is a travel company, manages large scale reservation systems for airlines and other travel providers. This is a rebound play, not a growth play. Uh, I'm in at Sabre at 11. Always looking to buy under 11 because I do believe that this is a $20 stock, uh, certainly 12 months from now, perhaps sooner, and perhaps more than $20. Uh, but I do see it as an opportunity to get 100% gain on a stock in a relatively short amount of time. The good news for Sabre though, just you're gonna have to be patient. You have to have airplanes fly in, hotels booked, all those things. I'm guessing it doesn't make a big move until closer to uh, October or so. All right, and finally on here, this is a new one I threw in. The AGQ is a 2X silver play, so it's a leveraged ETF, uh, 2X silver play. Uh, you guys probably saw what was going on in the silver market. I wanted a small piece of it because anytime you know everybody sells out of silver, I don't think there's a short squeeze, but I think the demand goes up and so does prices. So I bought into this one at 63.56. This was actually on Monday. And because it's 2X, it falls faster and gains faster than regular silver. Silver's had a mediocre week at best. So I'm actually down $258 uh, in, you know, whatever, five short days on AGQ. All right, guys, so that's a look at my stock portfolio as of today here in February. The plan going forward is to, you of course, add to any of those positions as prices allow. And I might be picking up some more like kind of home run sort of stocks at 100 or 200 shares if they're relatively cheap. In the back half of the year, once I get past my one year threshold for taxes, some of those smaller ones that are in there like Smile Direct, et cetera, Rocket, I'll just have to look and see, you know, do I wanna trim any position uh, now that I've made it past the tax threshold? Hopefully those stocks will have gone up uh, by that time. And so I'll just have to think about it. And, and the other side of it is just how attractive are things. Stocks are really expensive right now. There's so much money in the stock market. Eventually, I think that world changes and the folks that were playing with money in the stock market, you know, they start to take it out and use it on vacations and everything else that's worth celebrating when this pandemic comes to a close. And that's where I think we'll see some of these crazy prices come down. Uh, so I'm trying to be patient in there, but I always do like to buy a few things every month and I'll always keep you guys updated on that. The goal for my individual stock portfolio is to, of course, beat the S&P, ideally the QQQ. I haven't done that yet, but I hope to someday. And I want to be in a position from a cost basis management uh, to get out at any time, ideally without a loss and to be able to have 
the option to sell after one year for a profit. So when you see me talk about cost basis and managing cost basis down, I take it very seriously, uh, almost to the point where it costs me gains. In fact, I would say it has cost me gains several times. Uh, Square would be in that group of the names we just went through. However, in the long run, it has worked out very well for me to make sure that I pay low prices and have the flexibility to dump out of a stock as needed if either something comes up with uh, on the life side of things or after a year, there's better opportunities. I like to be positive uh, with my return so I can sell at a profit and jump into the other opportunities. All right, guys, let me know what you think of the portfolio down below. As always, thanks for watching. Please subscribe, give this video a like if you enjoyed the content. We'll see you on the next video.